Shalom. I had noticed something in our reading, uh, weekly reading at our congregation in Proverbs chapter 30, and I saw this several years ago, but I hadn't thought about it until last Sabbath. So it's in Proverbs 30, I think it's verses 4 through 6, and it's where the author of that particular proverb says something like this, Who has ascended up into heaven or descended? And I believe that's a claim to knowledge, but that's for another video and another time. But he goes on to say, Who hath gathered the wind in his fists? Who hath bound up the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? So in those last uh, three questions, and even in the fourth question, when you understand where all knowledge comes from, the author of that proverb is talking about or asking who is the creator, who created everything, um, who has ultimate knowledge, uh, who hath gathered the wind in his fist, who you know can hold the wind in his fist, and bound up the waters into a garment, put them into one place, established all the ends of the earth. Uh, th there's two more questions at the end there uh, in verse 4 and 5, I think it is, um, or maybe just verse 4. It says, what is his name? Now, let's stop right there for a second. What is his name? What is whose name? Well, the name of the creator. What is the name of the one who has done these things? And then it asks a question, what is his son's name? Surely you know, or if thou canst tell, I think the old King James says. I want you to notice the differentiation, first of all, that the author of that proverb places between the Creator and His Son. A lot of people don't believe the Creator has a Son, or a lot of people think that the Son is just a role that the Creator plays in a costume um, as a manifestation or something like that, but not that He's really a Son. But the author of Proverbs understood that there was a difference between the one who gathered the wind in his fist, the one who established all the ends of the earth, the one who bound up a, uh, the waters in, the, in a garment, he had a name, and then there's a mention of the name of his son, his son, showing that the son is not the one who established the ends of the earth. The son is not the one who bound up the waters in the garment. The son is not the one who gathered the wind in his fist. He is the son of the creator. He's the son of the one that did this, but he's not the one that did this. Secondarily, I want you to notice that the Old Testament authors recognized that Yahweh, the Creator, had a son. Now, it's debatable whether or not that son was actual then or predestined then. I take the position that that son was predestined then and did not literally pre-exist. I do believe he pre-existed notionally in the mind, word, and plan of the Creator. But I don't believe he literally pre-existed as a separate person from the Creator until his begettal in the womb of the virgin Miriam in Matthew 1 and Luke 1. But the author nonetheless of the proverb recognizes that the Almighty has a son. So it shouldn't come as a surprise to us because the drumbeat throughout all of Scripture is that you have God Almighty and you have the Son of God Almighty. Two persons, not co-equal, not co-eternal, uh, but two persons, a father and a son, a creator, and one who comes out of or is the offspring of uh, the creator. So just thought I'd share that from Proverbs chapter 30. Hope you have a great day. Shalom.